Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. I owe you guys a little update in regards to my secondary battery setup on the cruiser. Uh, if you follow my videos, you will have seen that I uh, put a crystal LED battery in my vehicle around two years ago and I haven't done any update. So the LED crystal battery actually wasn't too long in my vehicle. I changed from uh, LED crystal to live PO4 seven months ago and I just would like to explain you the reasons why. Number one, I had an issue on the Simpson crossing last year where my battery wouldn't charge. The battery charger pretty much overheats uh, midday or around three o'clock roughly always and then it starts draining the battery far more than if the engine was switched off. So yeah try and stop bonnet open let the air escape cool it down a bit but certainly not the ideal solution for the desert. That turned out to be not an issue with the lead crystal battery but with my uh, BCDC charger which I had in the engine bay. After measuring the temperature in the engine bay, I would not recommend for any BCDC charger to be installed in the engine bay and also not for any AGM batteries. However, when troubleshooting that, I also found that the lead crystal battery bulged a little bit under the bonnet. <laughs> Sorry, that was a fly. While uh, better batteries ensured me that that is no issue of the bulging. Uh, it is something I really did not like. On top of that, I also uh, realized that my drone equipment would not charge very well with a lead crystal battery or an AGM battery for that fact. For the simple fact that uh, the drone charger needs a very high voltage, constant high voltage, and if the charger sees that the battery is below 13 something, it will not charge. That meant I could only charge my drone while driving or sh shortly after I parked uh, up because the battery voltage of any AGM or crystal LED obviously drops fairly quick. So that was something which re didn't really work very well for me. On top of that, when looking more into lead crystal, I also uh, found out that really if you discharge it fairly low, even though it doesn't damage the battery supposedly, it will shorten the lifespan. There's also still a bit uh, confusion in regards to the charging of uh, lead crystal, at least in my mind. Supposedly it needs a very high bulk charging um, amperage, but on the other hand, if you go through the material, it says it has a, a C10 charge rating, which means 10% uh, of the battery capacity. So on a 90 amp hour battery, that would be 9 amp. Even when I look at the data sheet to see the recommended charging current, uh, any other battery gives me a maximum current, but the crystal LED uh, won't. It just gives you this kind of cryptic statement. The time I removed the battery, there was no LED crystal charging profile available for any of the DC DC chargers I looked into. So for me personally, that all seemed to be a bit too complicated as I'm not an electrical engineer. The revolution data sheet in comparison is pretty much straightforward there. Uh, another factor is that crystal LED does not really save me any weight. Crystal LED is as heavy as the AGM battery and for my remote tour up, I really want to save where I can save. So in comparison, my 90 amp hours crystal LED uh, weighed over 30 kilogram and my 100 amp hour, which has really 100 usable amp hour, live PO4, uh, only weighs 11 kilogram. So 20 kilogram saved, but I can use 100 amp hours, which is really double what I could use with the crystal LED without reducing the life of the battery. That are the reasons why I decided to switch to live PO4 lithium. And um, I looked into quite a few batteries 
and really liked what Revolution Power did. They um, come out of the marine business, so they work with live PO4 for boats for quite some time and um, also have a system for the car. And when I contacted them, they were happy to provide me one of their batteries at a reduced price for me to test it. So what I currently have in the cruiser is a Life PO4 Revolution 100 amp hour battery. And that means 100 usable amp hour. Uh, it's actually 125 amp hour battery, but uh, the 25 amps are actually preserved and you can't use them to maintain the battery status. There are cheaper batteries on the market, that's for sure. However, a Life PO4 or lithium battery is only as good as its battery management system, which is built into that battery. And personally, though I haven't tried that, I just do not trust their cheap e-bike battery. So Revolution has spent several years refining their BMS. It also comes recommended by Red Arc, and um, that's what I went with. I had the Revolution Life PO4 now in the vehicle for seven months. However, in that seven months, I have done 3,000 kilometers of the heaviest corrugation you can imagine on the canning. Uh, we had some pretty hot days. I just returned two weeks from cross country through three different deserts, uh, Tirari Desert, Simpson Desert, and, and the Stresletsky Desert, uh, where we also had some pretty hot days. And by now moving my secondary battery from under the bonnet in the back of the vehicle, I had absolutely no overheating issues. My um, Red Arc BCDC 1250, which charges a battery with 50 amp hours, is also in the back. And I have to say, of all my auxiliary battery setups I had, that is the first battery setup which just works. I don't have any issues charging my drones, even if my battery is only at 50% capacity, because it maintains this high voltage. So no issue there. With my high output alternator and the BCDC 1250 from Red Arc, that means within an hour of driving, I have 50 amp hours back into the battery. So on paper, the Life PO4 battery actually should be cheaper than Crystal LED, AGM or anything else. So supposedly I have a 10 years lifespan uh, of that battery. Obviously I haven't tested that yet. I'm very early in, it's only seven months. So time will tell whether that is uh, really the, the fact. I permanently have a Red Arc 80 watt solar panel fixed mounted on the roof, but also have a 150 watt uh, Red Arc solar blanket. So for my remote touring, with the panel, the blanket, and my BCDC 1250, that really means I can be stationary indefinitely anywhere where I have sun. Um, when we stayed in the desert uh, one night, uh, two nights at the same spot, I put the solar blanket uh, up and with the built-in panel, I really, I'm, I'm fully charged after three, four hours again, even though charging all my drone and camera equipment. So that setup as it is now, for me, so far, absolutely perfect. One of the best investments I have made and definitely something I do not regret. As a matter of fact, I'm currently building a new play truck and uh, even in that truck, I probably will put a, a little bit smaller Life PO4 uh, from Revolution because obviously I still carry all the camera equipment with me and need to charge. So 100% happy with it and can only wholeheartedly uh, recommend it. Let me quickly show you how my battery setup is at the moment. Okay. Okay. All right, so I've got two MIDI fuse blocks here. Yeah. Um, the one on the right is the actual BCDC output fuse. Yeah. The one on the left is the solar input. Yeah. So if you have a short, obviously, that's protected. Um, and then on this side, I've got another two 80 amp MIDI fuses. They're yeah. the supplies to your front and rear fuse boxes. Okay. Okay, yeah. so if there's a short between uh, here and the rear or here in the front, mm -hmm. that should blow. Okay. okay. So 
While I show you a little bit of footage of the trips I have done with that battery system so far, here on the left you see the um, technical data of the Revolution Live PO4 battery. Again, I went with Revolution because I trust what they are doing. Again, simply for the fact that the battery management system built in um, is one big factor uh, because that will determine the longevity, that will determine how well uh, um, the whole system is charged. One very important part is that the Life PO4 batteries consist out of many smaller battery packs which are then uh, merged together and used as the solid battery. And it is very important that all these um, small batteries are properly matched and have the same voltage, the same discharge rate and so on. And my fear would be, I haven't tested that, is that if you buy a cheap battery, um, obviously there got to be somewhere cost savings to make that price, and that they skimp there and just uh, put stuff together um, without really testing it and, and it 100% matching. Also, I don't think that some cheap uh, providers there really have the knowledge uh, for the BMS to, to um, achieve optimum performance of their batteries. One thing I would like to address, which is the safety aspect of the LIFE uh, PO4. Life PO4 is the safest of all the lithium batteries and they will not overheat and even if punctured they will not catch on fire. I show you here the safety tests Revolution did for their Life PO4 batteries. Life PO4 cannot be compared to lithium iron or lithium polymer batteries which have a much higher energy density but lacking in the safety department. So guys I hope that clarified why I changed from crystal lead to Life PO4 and my experience with the uh, Life PO4 over the past seven months roughly. But over 30,000 kilometers of touring and under some pretty extreme conditions. As always guys, if you like my videos, keep in mind everything is self-funded. So please help me subscribe, share my videos, like it. And if you can, even consider supporting me on Patreon, where you get early access uh, to all of my videos. And with a small monthly uh, donation, you can help me doing this stuff. Hope to see you along the tracks. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.